in the matter of the people of the state of California versus Orenthal James Simpson, case number BA09. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not. Boom. And we are back on a lovely, lovely Wednesday where we've had an awesome week, Monday, Tuesday, and today is awesome. And so will Thursday and Friday. Should I stop talking? Forever and ever. Forever and ever. It's going to be awesome. Cheers, Taylor. Cheers. Mine is pumpkin spice ale. Nice. Mine's just that, it's that same Sam Adams. Lovely. From before, Lovely. but it's as long delicious. as you enjoy it, it's all that matters. I like what I like. Okay. So, welcome to Doom to Fail. It is Wednesday. We are covering a historical topic today. That, if I know Taylor, which I sort of kind of think I do, is going to be Halloween oriented because she stole my theme. I don't know if it's Halloween oriented or it's just like a fun story now that I think about it, but it's creepy. So I feel like it's a little scary. So that counts, I guess. I'll take it. Okay. Love it. Um, so I have a whole bunch of sources that I will put in the thing. And I asked you to do some homework that you didn't do, but we'll talk about that in a second. So um, we're going to talk about the doomed expedition of the North, the Northwest Passage by the ships, the Terror and the Airbus in 1845. Hold on. They named a real life ship the Terror. Yeah, we'll talk about this in a sec- like why in a little okay. bit. But yes. So there's a show called The Terror. It was on AB- AMC, AMC, and now it's on Shutter. You can watch it on Shutter. And it's one season. And our friend Jay, who loves horror, all things horror, he really loved it. And I knew I wanted to watch it for this because I have some books that I read, but I definitely wanted to watch the show because it looked really good. I had a hard time with it. Like I was looking at reviews and reviews are like, it's a masterpiece. And I was like, A, it's too dark. Like physically, I cannot see it. <laughs> you know, like there are parts of where I'm like, what am I even looking at? You know? Yeah. And there's things that happened that were like, happened later that I was like, oh, I didn't realize that they had this thing. Or I didn't realize that this person was there. I think it's also partially because you know how I cannot tell white men with beards apart. <laughs> yes, that is, a, that is a common feat you've accomplished. White man with a beard face blindness. So I was like, I don't know who I'm looking at. I don't know what's happening. Um, and it also was like a fantasy story. So there was a little bit of magic. And I'm like, yeah, like I get it. Like I get it's fun to like put magic into this mystery to like try to figure out what happened. But also like, I don't care. The real story is super interesting. Like why would I care about magic? You know what I mean? Like, did you ever watch The Man in the High Castle? No. Is that the Nazi one? Yeah. So it's like what would happen if like the Nazis and the Japanese had won um, World War II? Yeah. And like, that is a super interesting idea. I definitely want to learn about that. Like things were crazy. It was really like really interesting. But then it got into magic, and I was like, oh, "Well, magic isn't real." You ruined so it. You ruined it. Like that's not what I'm here for. Like I'm here for this interesting potential historical story. So okay, can I can I, I say something stupid? Yes. I kind of felt that way about Game of Thrones. That there was magic in it. When when the red woman was there doing her magic thing. I know that dragons also aren't real, but it was like yeah. more realistic as mm-hmm. opposed to like now there's like a black cloud that is going to stab the future king. You know, it's like no, it, 100%. You, don't, you don't need it. I feel like then, because then you're like, then it could definitely not be real. You know? Yeah, like, yeah. Well, I don't need that. Or it's it, cheating it takes all, in the story. It's, it's cheating. It takes all the human intrigue out of it. Yeah. Or the dragon totally. intrigue. Yeah. You're like, oh, you could have just done magic this whole time? Yeah. Whatever. Super. I agree. Okay. Anyways, go ahead. Sorry. So anyway, if you want to watch the show, definitely do. I didn't love it, but I'd love to hear more opinions on it because it'd be fun. So this story I've actually been really excited about since I was a kid. And I have this book. And this isn't the original one that I had, but I remembered it later. I wanted to buy it for my kids. So I bought it on Amazon. I have it here. It's called Buried in Ice, The Mystery of the Lost Arctic Expedition. It's for like 9 to 12-year-olds. But it has like all these cool pictures. Like, look at this dead guy. Oh god, that is creepy. And I remember reading this when I was a kid and really and really like thinking it was so cool. So I bought it again like I bought it again like 10 years ago when I knew I was having a kid so that I could give it to her. But anyway, <laughs> I just reread it this week and it's super fun. It's about a um an expedition in the 1980s. And I'll tell you about it later. So I read that and that was really fun cuz I've always liked this story. So here's what happened to these doomed ships. Once Europeans discovered the Americas, they wanted to get to Asia easier. You know, that was the idea. Columbus thought he might hit Asia, all those things. They wanted to be able to go across the whole world as easy as possible. 
the only way to get to Asia during this time for like most of the world was to sail either under South America or under Africa. You know? Okay. You couldn't go through. You couldn't get there any quicker. The Panama Canal wasn't completed until 1914. So now it's a lot easier. But if you wanted to sail from like New York to San Francisco, you had to go all the way down under South America and then back up. You know, you couldn't just like Holy go there. Holy shit. Wow. But now, now you, the Panama is like right under Mexico. You could just, now you can kind of scoot through there. But you couldn't do that for most of time. So a lot of men wanted to be the first ones to maybe go up. So everybody could go down. Like, could you go up like above Canada, like to that top of the world to get to Asia? And so that's what they're trying to find called the Northwest Passage. And it's hard because it's really fucking cold there. Like, this is made of ice. There's ice. There's polar bears. It's freezing. The winters are dark the entire time. The ocean freezes like cold as possible. It's freezing. So in 1845, a new expedition came out. Some familiar faces who had been on these types of trips before. So they're all like seasoned sailors. I'll tell you about them. It was expected to take a few years, but they were really confident. They had like a really well-fitted boat that were ready to like crush ice and which is why we're drinking ice water. Get it? Um, And but they expected to pop out on the other side and be on like the west coast of Canada within like two years. The two Wait, boats from where? From England. Why would they end up on the other side of Canada? Because they're, go- they're going above Canada. They go like they go above. They stop in Greenland to like get supplies, and then go to the top of. They're going oh, through okay. all those islands above Canada, essentially. Okay. See how Canada just like turns into islands. That's where they're going. Yeah, I know that. I, I of course I know that. May I'm using my <laughs> gesturing for you. So um. <laughs> So um, the two boats that set out on this on this particular trip, and it had a lot of people had tried before, no one had done it yet, are the Terror and the Airbus. So the Terror is a Vesuvius class bomb ship, which is fun. So as I could tell, only three Vesuvius type ships were ever made, and that's just like a type of ship of like the ar- the architect or boat architect who made it. It was made in Topsham, Devon, in 1812 in the UK. It was named the Terror to scare people. It was a bomb ship. It was meant to go to war. They gave these ships really scary names on purpose to be like, oh shit, the terror is coming. Like they, you want to be afraid of it. It was in the U.S. during the war of um, 1812. It was in Baltimore during the Battle of Baltimore in 1814 when the Star Spangled Banner was written. So no the way. guy watching the bombs bursting in air and shit, the terror was there, which is cool. Um, after the war, she went on expeditions in the Mediterranean Sea, and in the 1830s, the Terror was made into an Arctic ship, which made it like a little bit stronger. They like put, made, put like more things on the hull to like reinforce it, so that it could technically crush through ice. Hopefully, that was like the goal. Uh, she went to the Arctic a few times before. She went in 1836. She was trapped for 10 months in the ice because at some point in all these expeditions, the boat just freezes. The yeah. ocean freezes. You know, you can't go any farther. In um, she was on another trip called the Ross Expedition. Francis Crozer, who's we're going to meet, he's one of the captains. He was the captain of the Terror during that ex- that um, expedition. They traveled to the Falkland Islands, which is actually at the bottom of South America. And while they were there, they discovered quote 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 a, a dormant volcano and named it Mount Terror, and that's still there, which is cool. That's terrifying. Um, the other ship is the Airbus, which actually, once I learned what that meant, it's much scarier than the word terror. Do you know what the word Airbus means? No. That is? Airbus is the Greek god of darkness. That's scary. The god of darkness. That's pretty scary. That's up there. Airbus is the son of chaos, and he's married to his sister, Nyx, who is the personification of night, which is cool. That's fun. That's sister part. Not the sister's part, but like, they're a creepy family. If your mom's chaos, literally yeah. chaos. You know. Um. Airbus was a Hecla class bomb vessel. Same thing. It was also in the Ross expedition to Antarctica. Um, but now it's 1845 and they need some people to be on these boats for another trip to try to find the Northwest Passage. One fun thing that they had is they had a camera. So before they left, they took some pictures of themselves like outside the boat, which is cool because you can actually kind of see what they look like. You actually like really know what these men look like because you have their photos. Um, some of the main 
people on the ships. There is the captain is Sir John Franklin. He was the overall leader of the expedition. He was captain of the Erebus. He was older. He was 59, which may have been like a little bit too old to do this, but they let him do it anyway. He was a very um, accomplished Navy sailor. Sea he had person. Sea person. He had been knighted, hence the sir. Um, he, in 1819, he was an um, on a copper mine expedition that went up the Hudson through Canada. Um, during that, 11 of the 20 men died. So people gave him the nickname, the man who ate his boots, which is like a really dumb nickname. But I mean, did he eat his boots? Probably, because they were starving. At least it was a fitting also, nickname. They also might have eaten each other. So well, we've talked about this. Like, if you're starving, that's fine. Just eat your friends. I would don't, totally eat my friends. Don't not do that. Um, he was married to a woman named Lady Jane Franklin, and she seems cool. She really worked hard to try to find him, and she ended up becoming kind of an explorer in her own right, spent a lot of time in Australia, like later after after he disappears. The captain of the Terror is Captain Francis Crozer. He is um, he had been the captain of the Terror for the Ross expedition that we talked about before. He was 48. He was a very seasoned captain. Um, oh, one cool thing. So the captain of the terror, Captain Crozer, he had joined the Navy when he was 13. And in 1814, he was on the boat that went to Pitcairn Island and met the last survivors of the bounty. Whoa. All your stories are intertwined. And now you got Vesuvius, you got this. I know, it's fun, right? So he met the people in the bounty that we talked about earlier. Um, another important person is Captain James Fitzjames. He was an officer. He was very sad about being a bastard. <laughs> I don't know why that's funny. Like, I just think I should call. I think I know that's terrible. I shouldn't say that. But he was an illegitimate child. He was like really bummed about it, and he really tried to like be really brave to like prove himself in the world. He had been everywhere. He'd been kidnapped in South America. He was in the Egyptian Ottoman War in the Middle East. He was in the first Opium War in China. He wrote poems about war. He was like a real hardened man. Um, some other people on there again. It's all dudes. There's Dr. Harry Goodsir. He was a ship surgeon. Um, and so he was like the doctor and like, you know, whatever that means. They did find eventually a like box with some like doctor stuff in it, like herbs and pills and shit. Cause they still don't know, you know, much about medicine at this time. Um, he picked that name for himself. It's pretty good, right? Good, Dr. Sir? Good, sir. It's like far as handsome man. Like it's <laughs> yeah, nice try, buddy. <laughs> no, it's a really good name. Um, a couple other guys. There's John Irving, Lieutenant Graham Gore, David Young. David Young was the ice master responsible for checking out the ice and getting them through, which, spoiler alert, he did not do. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of crew people. So they head off. They have a ton of stuff. So they have they fill the ships with lemon juice for scurvy, tinned food to eat for years, the tinned food, incidentally, had been created by a company run by a man named Stephen Goldner seven weeks before they started. He got the contract. So we had to rush to get the food canned for them. So that, that's important later as well. Okay. Um, the engines were made from a train, from a train steam engine to make it go faster. So this was like the most advanced ship they'd ever sent to the Arctic. Fun. Fun. So now it's May 19th, 1845. And here's what we know happened. They left from Greenfaith, Greenhaith, near London, that port. 24 officers and 110 men. In the show, another thing, like every once in a while, there'd be someone in like a red coat, like a different kind of military man. And I'm like, I don't know why they're there. And I, I don't think that was ever explained to me. But all sorts of different, different officers. They took them 30 days um, of really bad weather to get from London to Greenland. When they got there, they... The, there were some other ships that were with them that were like get, holding some more supplies. So they like restocked from those other ships. The other ships went back, and that was the last time they were able to write letters to their family before they like went into the into the Arctic. So Did you see this? Yeah, what happened? It was hives. There's a fucking mosquito in my room. Oh, gross! This damn thing, and he's like really right sick. now. He's really, I think so. He's really crafty. Or has a lot of mosquito bites on his arm. Man, it looks like I got attacked by a fucking Wolverine. It does. You should um, put a Okay, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, it's okay. So, anyway, they are in Greenland, last letters home, and then they're off. They're off into the Arctic. They're off into the Northwest Passage. On July 29th or 31st, 1845, so a little bit more than a month after they left, um, left Greenland, 
the both ships were sighted in Baffin Bay up in Canada by some whaling ships. And that was the last time they were ever seen. They were potentially seen by like um, Inuits later, like native people of the, the North, but that's the last time they were seen by Europeans. The first winter of 1845 to 46, they spent the winter in the Arctic of Beachy Island. Their three members of the crew died, and they're the ones who were buried on Beachy Island. And that's what this book is about, that I have this kid's book, because they were able to dig up those bodies, and they're really, really well preserved because of the ice. So um, Owen, Beattie, and John Geigner are, are archaeologists who went in the 80s, and they found these these graves, and they dug them up. They were, like, really, really well taken care of. They had beautiful, like, metal plates that had the, their name and their age. One of the guys, you know, they were, like, 20-year-old kids, you know, who who had died somehow during this first winter. And um, I'll send the, I'll take pictures of this book because you can, like, you know, see, really see their faces in the... Um, it's terrifying. It's absolutely terrifying. It's actually terrifying. Let me show you the other guys since I showed you that guy. There's this guy who looks like a pirate. Good God. <laughs> Wait, that's his body? Yeah. Dude, what the fuck? He was they found, found him like, like 140 that? years later. Yeah, because of the ice. He's and then this open mouth screaming. Oh my god, that is not good. <laughs> put him back. Put they, did them put them, back. they did put him back. They did put him back. Um, but they did tests on them and they found some things um in their in their body and some potential reasons why they died so early and why other people on the, on the boat might've died. So some of the things that they might've had is one thing is scurvy. So have you heard of scurvy? Yes. That's why you have to have oranges. Yeah. Or like lemons or anything with vitamin C. So scurvy is if you're vitamin C deficient, it doesn't really happen anymore because people, you know, aren't like on ships for, you know, two years without any fresh food, fresh fruit, really. Um, I always joke with my daughter that she's going to get it because she doesn't eat any fruits. <laughs> but I'm like, you know, scurvy. Um, what it does is your gums start to bleed. So you have weakened bleeding gums. Your tooth, teeth will start to fall out. You'll start getting really tired. Your joints will hurt. You'll have skin problems. The skin becomes dry. There's a lot of like, um, like red sores underneath your skin because um, your skin is bleeding like from the inside when you have scurvy. Um, you also get, um, you can get anemia. So you're very weak. You're very pale. Um, your wounds don't heal anymore because vitamin C creates a collagen that heals wounds. Um, and also it creates mood changes. So it can, you can become really irritable, depressed um, and sad, but obviously also because like your teeth are falling out and you're really sick. It's so, like, right. of course. That totally makes sense. You don't have scurvy because you're having a good day. Right. You're not like super. I'm super happy. I just have scurvy. No big deal. Like, no, it's a big right. deal. You're probably pissed off. Um, so they 100% had scurvy. Something else that they definitely had was lead poisoning. So the tinned food that they got, like I said, it was made really quickly. And the way it was made is it was like a tin and then it was soldered with lead around the outside. But some of it that people had like seen, it was like it was soldered really quickly and really poorly. So there would be like lead dripping down the sides of it you know what i mean like it would be hard but like they just didn't they didn't like a lot of it and done it really quickly so it must have gotten into the food and uh, effectively poisoned the food so another thing that i is like don't understand but kind of like understand technically but don't understand really is how canning works and preserving food you know i don't know how it works either so like when i get to cook time, it don't you so yeah so a long time ago i bought all the stuff to do canning and I took a class like a canning course at like the New York Culinary Institute because you could take like one off classes I remember I was standing on the subway it was super crowded and I had this like box full of hot jars and I was like please somebody let me sit down and like someone finally let me sit down but I was like oh my god like I couldn't get a cab but um you have to like heat up the container you're putting it in the food has to be hot. You like put it in there. You put like brine on top of it, which is like salty things that like keep it good for like pickling things. And then you have to close it and then you put it into like boiling water. And that what's, that's what like pops and seals it, which is why when you open pickle jars or something, they pop, you know, yeah. like it pops down to, to be sealed. Um, But it kills and it activates microorganisms, enzymes, and yeasts, and it destroys those agents so that they can't grow, so the food will stay good for a certain amount of time. Um, you can also put it into an immediately seal it in a container. As long as it doesn't get any more oxygen in it, it should be okay because you don't want the oxygen is like what makes the microorganisms grow. Right. Um, you can also like do things like you know you can obviously like dry dry food to preserve it you can 
have something like sit in, in salt or in, um, in like acid or sugar, which is like jams and jelly. It's like you put like a lot of sugar with like fruits and then you put it in the hot can and then that's what like keeps it and like locks it down. Um, but they had just sort of figured that out like during this time. It was brand new and it was exciting because you could have food for a really long time, but also it was like prone to error because it was new, you know? Right. Like you're not going to get like poisoning now. Yeah, you probably also like consuming lead probably isn't a good thing. Yeah, exactly. They're welding it with lead, which sounds like they are. <laughs> they are. It's definitely in this case. So the men on the terror and the Airbus probably also had lead poisoning. The symptoms of lead poisoning are, you know, gastrointestinal issues, nausea, vomiting, pain, fatigue and weakness, anemia. So like this is on top of the scurvy, you know, like they're having all these things happen. A lot of them were the same. But another thing, it um, there's behavioral changes and headaches, confusion, memory problems, irritability. So everyone was probably like not only freezing, but like really messed up, you know, like and angry, confused, and angry, confused. Exactly. So like there could have been and like the book that's based on a, the movie, the show. Sorry, the show is based on like the book. They're like presupposing a lot of things, but some of it is like you know people. Somebody probably went crazy. Of course. Maybe there were fights, yeah. you know, all sorts of things were happening. Um, worst cases, you get kidney damage, seizures, you go into a coma and you die. So all this would have started happening that, that first winter. Also, the winter itself sounds terrible. It's dark for 10 months or the whole winter. Or maybe it's not 10 months, maybe like five months. It's dark the entire time. The boat is stuck in the ice and they do things like they have to go and st- up on the deck and like walk laps on the deck because otherwise like they're going to like their muscles are going to like die because they're not moving you know Jeez. they have to like move around and do all these things so it sounds absolutely terrible um in the summer of 1846 they headed back south into a different part of canada called peel sound and they were stuck on at the ice in um let's see september 1846 to the spring 1848 they were stuck on the ice on king william island in in up in canada what this last time when they got stuck, so this is their second winter, um, they set up camp around the ships, which wasn't totally clear on the show, but like set up camps. They had like little stores, little places where you could like do the laundry, get stuff done. Um, they would pack snow up against the ship to keep it warm. And like warm is relative, but they're like trying to like insulate it. The ship was also probably tilted. So this is something that happens in the show that I think is really like jarring is like it's tilted. You know, even if, even if your house is tilted like a foot, you know, like, they're still in it, like sitting around these tables and like walking through these doorways and it's all tilted. I feel like that would drive you crazy after a couple I, of months. Yeah. So back in the day when I was living in LA, we used to go on like these, uh, the open houses and stuff and everything in LA had foundation problems. So you'd walk in, you're like, I need to vomit. Like, I don't know yeah. why, but I have to vomit. It's it's because like your, your equilibriums, it's like your Messed brain up. understands something, but you don't understand what it gets, which is like mm-hmm. you're on uneven footing and you're like on your side. It's yeah. It's like really not a good way to live. Totally. It's crazy. It's really like, it's really jarring. So that was happening a lot to them as too, as well. So we know this. So we know that that was happening because in May of 1847, some of the men like went on, went for a walk and they found this thing called the cairn, which is like a pile of rocks where you like put notes in it for future people to like, get like a little kind of like a mailbox that yeah. like, you assume it's, it, it's stacked rocks isn't it that's what a can yeah. is yeah yeah exactly so first they wrote they wrote the note on pre-printed paper and the paper was pre-printed with the words whoever finds this paper is requested to forward it to the secretary of the admiralty london with a note of the time and place at which it was found or if more convenient to deliver it for that purpose to the British Council at the nearest port. And then it had the same thing written again in French, Spanish, Dutch, Danish, and German. So anybody who like would happen to find it would see that. And then on that note, they wrote by the 20th of May, 1847, the ships are at, you know, this latitude and longitude longitude. We did that winter in Beachy Island. So that's how we know that was true. And then they ascended the Wellington channel and returned to the West side of Cornwall Island. Sir John Franklin commanding the expedition all as well. And they said, the people leaving this note are two officers and six men, um, Lieutenant Gore, Chaz, DeVoe, and a mate. So that was on May 24th, 1847. They left that note that was like, everything is fine. And then they went back to their ships. Something happened quickly after because the second note that was left there said, 
Okay, wait, hold me to this. So we know that right after this, this, this was May 1847. We know that on June 11th, 1847, Sir John Franklin died. He was the the main captain. We know he died that day. We don't know how. Um, they've been stuck on the island, King Island, William Island, for over a year and a half. And we know that because the second letter wait, that was- a year and a half? Mm-hmm. So they left but this that, note. By that time, you have like summer comes around, the snow melts, you- can hunt for but it's game. Not like, it's not like summer, summer. Like, it just didn't, they couldn't get out. They were stuck, stuck. It is pretty far north. Okay. And we enough. don't know exactly what happened. You know, it's so like, we don't know exactly, like, something else could have happened. Like, we really don't know. Um, cause on a map, other... on a map, it's further north than the northest part of Antarctica. Yeah. So it's got to be cold in the summer, too. Yeah. It never gets, it's never warm. Even when it's sunny, it's freezing. Um, the, so we know a little bit of those things because the second letter was written on that same piece of paper in the cairn. So they went back to it, took that paper out and wrote on it on 25th of April, 1848, they wrote the terror and the Airbus were deserted on the 20, on the 22nd of April, five leagues Northwest of this having been beset since the 12th of September, 1846. The officers and crew consisting of 105 souls under, under the command of Captain F.R.M. Crozer landed here. This paper was found by Lieutenant Irving under the under the calm so said built by Sir James Ross, blah, blah, blah. So they're putting it in there. They also said Sir James Ross's pillar has not been found. The paper has been transferred to this position. And whatever it says, Sir Franklin died on the 11th of June, 1847, and the total loss by deaths of the expedition up to this date, nine officers and 15 men, James says James Captain and Captain Crozer signed it. They said, we're starting on tomorrow, the 26th, for Bax Fish River. So basically that second part of the note written on top of the old note was like, actually, we've been stuck for a year and a half. Our captain is dead. We've lost this many people. We've abandoned our ships. And now we're walking to this river. Is what Please. it says now. So that's it. We never heard from them again. There's no no written record. We don't have any captain's logs. We have nothing else from the ship. We only know those those two things. Lady Jane Franklin, the wife of the Captain Franklin, raised a lot of money to help find them, but they never did. There were a bunch of other um, kind of like search parties to go find them. There was one by John Ray in 1854. Um, he obtained information from Inuit sources that they had seen the men walking and pulling boats, but they don't have any um, any proof of that. So they just like they just thought they had, had done that. In 1854, they were officially declared dead, so that they could like move on with legal things. Between 1847 and 1880, more than 30 ex- expeditions sailed to try to find them and try to continue to find the passage, but they never found them. Um, there was in 1859 um, one party led by Lieutenant William Hobson. He discovered some bodies around like a lifeboat. And in the lifeboat, there were two skeletons and some relics from the expedition. So in the boat, there was a lot of equipment. There were a lot of books, handkerchiefs, scented soap, sponges, slippers, hair combs, and many books. So like the stuff that they were bringing with them, they brought with them with the lifeboat. And I just want to say, don't bring work stuff with you if there's an emergency just leave yeah i was gonna say the co- who was the comb for yeah i don't know it was like part of their like stuff that they were gonna like give to people when they landed somewhere but like you don't need uh, that. you know what i like mean your and, trade like, they were looking for things to trade yeah but like if you're like walking for your life like don't bring stuff like if you're in a tall building like i used to work on the 37th floor of a building and then the fire department would come and to do like our test things and they'd be like okay well if there's a fire the next safest floor is 35 so you can stay on 35 and it's a fireproof floor and i'm like go fuck yourself i'm going outside and walking as far away from this goddamn building as i can you know like you have make to leave fireproof it. floors yeah that's bullshit absolutely not and i think that that's what ha- happened to, i imagine this is terrible but like i'm sure on september 11th if people were like afraid to leave because they might get in trouble you know or like confused and like listening to someone at work who doesn't know what's going on and just like saying things and i know like one group like went down and they had them go back up they're like oh no you're safer in the building go back up you know what i mean like oh my god just leave like if there's my dad was like afterwards after september 11th my dad was like leave if anything's ever wrong you run as far away as possible you know yeah so that's my my thing for everybody to know um so then in the 1980s um 
you know, this person who wrote this book, Buried in Ice, he did a big, um, found those couple bodies. He thought also it could have been the water on the boat that contained lead, but there was definitely lead poisoning. Um, some of the bones had cuts in them, like they were eaten, which like totally makes sense. Absolutely, people, if, you're, if that's happening. The men likely abandoned the ships and just started walking. You know, and and we never know. We'll never know exactly what happened during that year and a half. We don't know what happened. I started walking, but they're gone, gone to the wind. Um, in two thousand and eight, the um, Parks Canada declared it a historic site, even though they didn't know where the boats were. They were like, as soon as we find them, they're ours. Like they're historic sites. Like do not plunder, do not take them. We want them. Um, on September first, twenty fourteen, they found part of the boat. So they started to keep looking inland, and they found the Airbus on September second, two thousand and fourteen, one hundred and sixty seven years after it disappeared. That's crazy. Yeah, and then it's 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 sunk, you know, it's on the bottom, and so they're using like underwater archaeology to to get it, and like they found cool things like beautiful plates and like those things. I don't, I can't remember what they're called, but you know those things that go on your shoulder like like this, and then you have they have like tassels. The general like, thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So like they found those things because they, I think I think this part of the show, if you ever watch it, it does make a lot of sense. Like it's still very formal. Like you're still at work, you know, even though you're like trapped in this thing, there's like a very clear chain of command, you know, people are just trying to like get through the day. Like all these things are happening. You're still, still at work. So they found some cool things like that. Two years later, 2016, they found the terror. They found the terror 45 miles away from the Airbus, which is really wow. weird. And so like, I don't, like, they don't really know what happened. Like could, the terror have like gone further maybe because it like um someone tried to move it further did the ice melt enough that it drifted 45 miles away and then froze it again sounds like and it then they sank? yeah that's what it sounds like to me because it sounds like they left like because there were no like bodies on the terror but also they'd be gone because it's been that long so i guess we don't know um so they obviously did not find the northwest passage but in 1903 norwegian explorer Roland Adminson, he actually did navigate the entire Northwest Passage. In 1944, Canadian Royal Mounted Police Officer and Explorer Henry Larson um, sailed, sailed it from west to east. So they had done it. And now, guess what? It's pretty easy because the ice caps are melting. <laughs> oh, dude, that's awesome. So good news for anyone who wants to sail across the Northwest Passage. It is now available because the world is ending. So you congratulations. Can, can... You just jet ski through that place. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So it's a little bit of a continuation on ghost ships, even though the ship is like, they're, they're sunk, but like there's definitely ghosts of these dudes dragging around a lifeboat with full of like furniture and shit with their toes frostbitten off, trudging through the Arctic for eternity. You know, what, you, know what occur, you know what occurred to me is that like if me and you, like just me and you, are ever in a predicament where we're stuck with no food or supplies, no hope of rescue, given the amount of times we've talked about eating people, I could totally see us. Like, it's like the first night, and I'm like, she's talked about killing and eating you. She knows you've talked about killing her. You can hear me, so like, you, knife sharp, knife sharpening. Yeah, it's, it's like, what are, you, what are you doing, Taylor? And I'm just like, I'm on the side there working on my axe, just... There's, like, a really a fun, fun, and how funny it can be Stephen King short story about a doctor who like thinks he's great and he's like I'm really smart blah 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 for whatever reason he gets um shipwrecked on the side of a like on an island and he starts eating himself piece by piece so he like eats a foot and then he like eats his whole leg and then he's like someone's gonna find me but by the end he's like just like one arm and like a torso but he's because like, <laughs> he's like eating most of himself and like you know it's presumed that no one finds him and all of that but yeah I feel like we could start with like I don't know how which arm do you like the least it's, well, it's like it's like Cannibal the the um the musical where it's like we you're you're discovered, but you're discovered like after like seventeen hours and you're like just like plump and like eating like roast rotisserieing a leg. You're like, where's Farce? Like, I I don't know I don't know what happened to those other guys. Like, it hasn't been that long. <laughs> <laughs> you were hungry already. What's going on? totally see it happening um that's awesome yeah, but that's I, love, I love a mystery i love a mystery of the seas and it'd be cool if we ever found like a note of what happened there but probably what happened there was probably like very boring they just like tried to exercise tried to eat tried to survive for those so you would months. not recommend watching it you know i think i don't know i i don't know 
<laughs> because Jay really loved it and the reviews are great. The reviews are like it's magical and wonderful. So I feel like But maybe... Jay likes Jay likes heady stuff. Yeah, it's pretty heady. Like I just I'd rather watch like I feel like I could watch it with like I just I liked seeing the ships. I like because I love oh, you know what also was confusing for me? This is what I meant to say. I'm also watching Our Flag Means Death. Have you seen that? No, you've told me to watch that too. It's so good. And it's about Blackbeard and um and Captain Steed and it's with um Taika Waititi and Reese something, the guy oh, the then, New Zealand. Yeah, I'd be into it. They're yeah. fantastic. It's so good. But like it's very similar time period right so it's like the boats look exactly the same but it's like 10 times more fun than the, the show of the terrorists so i was like kind of getting them confused in like a weird way but also like judging them against each other and i'd be like of course i'd rather watch this like funny show about pirates than like this like melodramatic show that like, is not really telling me that much so maybe that was part of it too watch did you ever together. see the sound of metal mm, i don't think so it was about a, this metal musician who like it goes deaf and then it's just like a sad, it's just, and then Jay was like, oh my God, it's so great. It's oh, such a great movie. Like, oh. I'm like, oh, of course you would like something that's all about like <laughs> feelings and shit. Jay also likes a lot of fun things. It's so funny. Like the first question on Sound of Metal is what was the point of Sound of Metal? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Exactly. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't say don't watch it. I've never watched it because it's cool. Um and scary to like have visualized visualizations. Like one thing that they have that I'm sure they had was like an ice hole and one of the guys dies from falling down this ice hole and it's like you know a 12 foot hole into the ice to like fish through or whatever if you fall in that hole you're dead and that's scary yeah. and that's scary you know stuff like that was kind of scary and and then like the doctor stuff is always fun because like everyone's getting their like gangrene gangrenous legs cut off and you're like he's like maybe i'll try this herb on your scurvy you know and you're like okay this sucks i'll go with it um well, we are we are definitely setting ourselves up for expanding our network beyond Doom to Fail into a production company where Juan Ooh. can direct our horror ghost ship movie. He doesn't want to direct, but he would probably have a lot of opinions on it anyway. The sound of <laughs> haunting. I mean, man, if if anyone ever really sees a ghost ship, it sounds awesome. I'm sure the terror is ghost shipping out there as well. Um, in full in full mast and all that. When you look up haunted lakes, like you said, I don't even know if it was this episode or the one before, whatever it was. Yeah. There's one lake, I think it's in Georgia, that sounds fucking terrifying. It was a lake that was basically like one of the first like self-settled entirely black communities in America, where they yeah. had like their own banks and grow like it was a, it was a real city, and then some other white neighborhood wanted like a lake and that was the closest valley to where that neighborhood was and so without wow. warning they basically broke dams and flooded this entire so now there's literally literally houses underneath you is it is fucking scary i'm gonna look this up it's actually a great horror movie that i watched about a town like that and it was obviously a, a horror movie but it was really creepy but like yeah they went like walked to the streets and there were like bikes on the ground and like houses and stuff Lake Lanier. 200 people have died since 1994. Whoa. And you look at, oh, oh, yeah. Again, it was like a real town. So, like, it, it, hold on. Lake, um, so, like, there's, like, fucking people bought buried there, right? So, there's actually a graveyard underneath your, it is so scary. Oh, my God. Like, they, they try to make it nice. And they're like, it was built by the Army Corps of Engineers. Da -da -da -da. And you're like, uh yeah but i already know that you killed people oh you can live there now so creepy. oh that's so scary like how when um when they said when lake mead started to lose um water because of, i know bodies yeah, everywhere. Like, tons of dead bodies and like tractors and stuff down there that's really really scary oh that's Dude, terrible so say, peel, peel what's his name um Jordan Peele. Peele. Jordan Peele. Jordan Peele should totally fucking do this movie. Oh my god, that'd be amazing. Anyways, um, Taylor, very fun. Very fun yeah. story. Uh, you did not convince me to watch the show, but it does I didn't, but I think you should get terror. this children's book because it's so good. We should. I was like reading it at soccer practice. I'm like, am I am I not a normal person? I'm reading this children's book about this, about this lost Can ship at soccer practice. 
can you post that shit or uh, the book in our yeah. channel or in our um insta yeah yeah i'll take pictures of it especially these pictures of these like guys as these like um these dead bodies they're crazy because like Super you know creepy. if you if you're buried in the ice which we know oh this is a medicine chest found abandoned by that boat i'll take a picture of this too but look it's got like little jars of stuff in it which is kind of fun you know you're like well this, this the, powder maybe will help you maybe it's cocaine you know whatever the, whatever they thought you could have in 1845 the way those bodies were preserved is absolutely fucking terrifying it's terrifying because like they're they're like put them back kind dude. of their, their eyes are start. there. Oh my god! I'm gonna stop looking. I gotta stop looking at that. It's a lot. I I don't know why did I why did my mother buy me this when I was a child and why did I seriously? Buy this also, why is it getting called a child's book? Like it is so scary. <laughs> it's from the it's from it's a Time Quest book by Scholastic and Time Magazine. And anyway, anyway, recommend to read to your children to scare them at night. Yeah, you can also find <laughs> autopsy pictures of Jeffrey Dahmer's victims if you want to read that to your kids, which is kind of similar to this book that Taylor's holding up. Can I tell you that sometimes Florence just wants to look at pictures of dead animals, and so we'll give her our phone, and she'll Google dead animals, and just look up at pictures of, like, bloody animals? On... We got to address she... that one day. I think she's fine. I think she's just, like, naturally curious. Maybe she'll be a, be a, be a veterinarian. We'll... We'll talk about that in about 15 years. <laughs> yeah, she'll talk about that in therapy. She'll unpack that later. <laughs> um, sweet. Is there anything you want to share with folks before we cut off? Nope, that's it. Um, everyone follow us, please, on at Doom to Fail Pod on all the social media. Instagram is where I post the most. And we also have everything on YouTube. If you are a YouTube listener to podcasts, it is there. If you go to our Instagram and click on our link tree, it will like tell you where you can listen. So like that's a helpful for like if you're you have a friend who doesn't understand how to listen to podcasts, which I have plenty of those. So please feel free to to do that. And um send us an email, doomed to fail pod at gmail.com. If you have any questions or ideas, we do things that are doomed to fail, disasters, relationships, ghost stories. I don't know. Give us some ideas. Give us ideas. We love it. I love it. Um Awesome. Thanks, Taylor. Well, go ahead and cut things off as of... Thank you.